your Bibles, iPads, phones, however you're going to get to it. Psalm chapter 1. I'm going to make it easy on you. Psalm, the first chapter. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Lord. I pray you had a good week. Mine's been up and down. Amen, as most weeks are. Many of us sports people, we kind of watch, see what's going to happen. But now, I'm, I'm kind of tainted with sports. It's just kind of like, come on. It just, it ain't got the same feel to it anymore. Uh, but, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get some college football, you know. The, wouldn't y'all like some Aggies? Wouldn't y'all like some college football? Amen. You LSU fans, wouldn't you like some college? How about you roll tide? Mm -hmm. Psalm chapter 1, are you comfortable? Tuesday night, I said something while I was preaching. It just kind of flowed out of me. And when it did, it hit a resounding dong in me. Just like, boom. I just knew at that moment, that, that was the thing I wanted to preach. And the issue is simply this. Uh, we don't go through life. We, go through, uh, we grow through life. Amen. Many times we make a mistake. So you need to just go through it. Just get on through it. But actually, in life, you are growing. And the scripture says in Psalm chapter 1, verse 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, or stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law, the word of God, of the Lord. And his law doth he meditate day and night. Do you remember last week I talked to you about peace? That whoever keeps his mind stayed on him stays in perfect peace? And no, you can't be offended if you stay in the word of God. It's amazing. We, the things that are trying to, fit, trying to fence you all the time, so you've got to be careful and just stay put in the book. Hallelujah. But his delights in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree. Everybody say, like a tree. Like a tree. Say it again, like a, like a tree. See, now this is important, like a tree. Because the scripture said we like sheep. It says we like stuff. We like lions. We like sheep. Uh, not, not like as in... To, uh, to like, but we are like it. Amen. It, 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 we resemble that. So we're like a tree. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Father, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for symbolism. I thank you for the light things in the word of God, like, like salt, like light. God, like so many things that we see in here today, like a tree. God, help us gain from that and learn from it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Like a tree. You know, some trees, like, like great big oak trees or the redwoods. When Lori and I were out in California, there may be a picture of that on there somewhere. This is just one tree that was there. And it was considered a couple of hundred years after the birth of Christ, this tree was planted. And now it's in Fort, outside Fort Bragg, and it's full of rings. It's, it's considered probably 1,500, almost 2,000 years old. Amen. And they have the rings inside of them, which many of us understand as age rings. And whenever there was a wide ring, when you see a wide and an even tree ring, the tree experienced a healthy growing season. This usually means it was a year with plenty of rain and plenty of sunshine. When you see thin rings inside of a tree, a thin ring occurs when the tree had slow growth for the growing season. A year of drought, not enough rain, lack of sunshine, sunlight can cause a tree to grow very, uh, very little. An infestation inside the leaves from, e uh, from insects also slows the growth of the tree. Now, life can be pretty rough on trees. It can be tough on them. They got to go through drought, excessive rain, hail, fire, insect plagues, disease, epidemics, injuries, thinning, air, pollu air pollution, all leave their mark on a tree's annual growth rings. Trees are a top notch biological indicator. Their annual rings reveal the events that have occurred in their environment. There are people that actually study the rings and can tell you what that year, what that tree went through. Again, the narrow rings do not only signify a lack of sun or water, a forest fire may have damaged the tree's crown and slowed its growth. Uh, again, the insects and trees don't have all their hearts in the right places. If some trees you cut them, the heart has moved to one side because the abuse of the wind blowing on it, it'll put its heart against the wind to protect the rest of the tree. As I'm reading that and I'm walking through it, I realize we are like a tree. If you cut me, there are 59 rings right now forming in my body. Amen. Some of them rings have been glorious. I mean, they're nice, wide, and round. Amen. Seasons that we 
it easy. Amen. Life was easy. Ministry was productive. I'd pray over people. And they'd get healed. I'd ask God for finances and blessing. They'd come into people's life. It was like I, I could go play golf and hit nearly in the 70s. Amen. After nine holes. Hallelujah. I had a wonderful time in life. It was just like moving along. My health was good. My feet were good. My body was moving. I was flexible, man. I mean, I have had rings in my life where I recovered fumbles playing football. I've had rings in my life where I managed things and made it work. I've had rings in my life when relationships were wonderful. People were great and grandiose. And I thought to myself, being born again is one of the greatest. Woo, look at that ring, 1979. Hallelujah. That ring started forming. There was a little crown put right there. It was good stuff. And then you'll see thin rings in your life. There'll be times in your life when life got tough. Relationships shattered. People scattered. Finances were scarce. There was a loss of job. Floods, pandemic, viruses, heartbreak, floods. The kids that were once kids are now teenagers. The rings have changed in your life. Amen. From once was a nice wide... Uh, circumference now is kind of jagged and bothered and it has some things to it and we look at life and say pastor life just been tough it's been this no my friend you're growing through something you're learning through something you just don't go through life you grow through this thing amen in every life you got like a tree everybody say like a tree like a tree in its seasons bears fruit. The problem is we just think all the time we got to be bearing fruit. You can't drop fruit 12 months out of the year you got to go through some stuff to grow. And as you grow, and as you learn, and as you press through it, in your seasons. Everybody say seasons. Yeah. Amen. Here comes the fruit. I want to tell you, in my life, I look back and I say, God, I don't know where you went. I, I've prayed, nothing's happening. I just bounce off the ceiling, come back down. I, I, I search for you like David talked about. I, 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 I'm thirsty for you. And God said, you know, look, son, you're just growing through this right now. You're just growing through this right now. you got to keep on growing. And someday, hopefully, well, I'll have 60 rings. And maybe even get, make it to 65 rings. i got a man out in the other campus. He's 90-something year old. And, I, and I'm not, I don't say this in any way being demeaning. But that man, is, every time he I said, Mr. Jackson, where's your mask? He said, at my age, you think I need one? <laughs> hey, man, I done, my rings, man, I've been through so much in my life. Hallelujah. You think I'm scared? The virus ain't going to bother me. Hey, man, as long as you got one I'm on, I'm fine. Hallelujah. But you're still here. Your heart adjusted inside of you and pushed against the storms of life and you protected others with your heart. Amen. That's what you did. And there's times in life that it shifted. Amen. And it worked toward your children and your grandkids and through life. You kept on pressing. Psalm 92 gives us a palm tree. Amen. You know, the oaks and the red oaks and, and the, uh, the, the red, uh, redwood trees, and those all have rings in them. But then the pine trees have rings in them. But then you get to a palm tree. Palm tree doesn't have rings. Palm tree shaped different. It's made for a different area. The scripture says in Psalm 92 verse 12, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like the cedars of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. I remember my mom crying when she was 30 because she thought she was old. You know, age, my friend, age is simply a number. There was a song by Toby Keith that said, If you didn't know when you were born, would you know how old you are? How do you feel? How old do you feel? So he says here, they'll bear fruit in their old age. They'll stay fresh and green. Proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There's no wickedness in him. Like a tree planted. Amen. Uh, in the house of God. There's something about being in the house and being planted. Somebody said once a tree is just a little, old, a little seed that held his ground. Sometimes in church life, you just got to hold your ground. You just got to stay with it and just keep right on growing and believe God for the best. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, reconnected. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So I go back to that scripture there in Psalms that says, The righteous will flourish like a, uh, a tree. Like a palm tree. So if I read this out of the Message Bible, it says, We're Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ himself now 
Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. How? You say in Christ, God put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong so that we could be put right with God. And this word righteousness always bothered me, Sermon, because I knew within myself I am not righteous. Amen. I, I struggle with this thing, man. I struggle with always thinking right and doing the right, amen, and, and making sure I'm doing, you know, I, I just, I work on it, I work on it. But yet, I, I, I realize what Paul said, my righteousness is as filthy rags. Everything about me, that's filthy in here, man. I, I, I struggle. After 40 years of serving God, I still struggle. But then I look at this. The scripture says, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God imputed right. In other words, because I love him and he loves me and he covered me with his blood, he made me righteous. Amen. I don't have to try to figure it out. I don't have to do anything to get it. Amen. It's just God did it for me. And when you get that revelation, then you quit trying so hard. Amen. You quit work. You get you because if you work too hard at it, you become a little bit self-righteous. Amen. The righteousness is it's divinely imputed to us. To impute means to attribute uh, to another, to ascribe goodness and guiltless to someone. You ever called your kids good and you knew where they weren't? <laughs> Were you ever speaking about faith? And you just looked at that kid and said, you know, you're a good kid. And you're looking right behind them and there's crayon writing all over the wall. Amen. They, 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 they stopped up the toilet. But they're shoving stuff down inside there. Amen. They found a bunch of cotton and threw it in the toilet. Oh, my goodness. Child, you're so good. Amen. You're speaking by faith to them. Can they get an amen? Righteousness is imputed. It's not deserved or earned. Righteousness is being right standing with God. A palm tree, when you study about these palm trees, you could cut them, but you can't kill them. The minerals and the nutrients most trees need to survive are found in the surface, just below the bark. So when you cut them, they die. They're very shallow, yet not the palm tree. Its life comes within it, so it flourishes even under attack. You cut it, but this thing, I mean, you, you can hack it. It's just going to keep right. It'll heal itself up and keep on living. Romans chapter 6 says, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. Come on. Crucified with him. That the body of sin might be done away. So that we should no longer be in bondage to sin. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Amen. Not yet. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now listen, you can cut me, but you can't kill me. The reason why is I'm crucified with Christ. Now, this is a metaphor reminding us that when we got born again, we crucified with him. Do you know what rights a crucified man has? Do you know what rights a crucified woman has? None. Oh, you didn't want to say it, did you? Come on, Americans. We, we, we love our rights. Amen. We all about rights. Uh, we, we can quote you about our rights. A crucified man has no rights. They literally can't be offended. Listen to me. When you teach people they have rights, you get rebellion. When you teach people they got rights, you get rebellion. I've been watching it. Well, I got a right not to wear this thing. Come on. I got, I got a right to protest. What's all the protest about? Rights. Now look, I'm not against your rights. You have rights. But when you teach people their responsibilities, you get success and prosperity. But when you teach them they got rights. Because I've seen kids do it. Kids are like, I, I got a right. I got a right. I got a right to be in this house. I got a right to eat. I got a right to do this. I got a right. I got a right. I got a right to have a phone. I got to have a right to have a TV. I have a right to have, have a right. Have a right. Where did you get that right from? You, you been to your neighbor's house? You have a responsibility. To take care of things right here. Now, I'm not against your rights. And I'm sure not against for or against the, the, the issue with the mask. I'm, I'm, ner I'm just... I'm nervous about it because of what it does to us as a nation. But this thing is worldwide. You realize that? I like to blame everything on the Democrats, as many of you did, but you can't because it's worldwide. They're not that smart. You figured that out? Okay. <laughs> Crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. In other words, you, you could cut me, 
You can talk about me. You can beat me, abuse me, laugh at me, ignore me, exclude me. You can hate me. Amen. And you can even try to kill me. But the bottom line is I'm crucified with Christ. And many of us, we don't believe that because anything comes against us at that moment. We want to kick out from the cross. You can't kick because your, ne- your legs are nailed to it. You can't slap them because your hands nailed to it. Amen. You can't do any of that. Oh, yeah, you can run your mouth. You can post stuff. You can yak. But the Bible, bottom line is, and listen, your preacher ain't there. I'm still trying to kick from the cross, slap from the cross, spit on you from the cross. Hello, I I struggle with this, but I remind myself I am crucified with Christ. Amen. And when he was there, who had more rights than the king of glory? He could have called angels down to deal with this situation. And yet he took that abuse for us. Why? So that we could be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And like a tree planted by the waters, bring forth fruit in our old age. Thank God. I ain't going through nothing. I'm growing through stuff. Woo, preach, preacher. You're not some pansy, weak, wobble knee, barely getting by group of people. You've been through some things in life. Amen. You've handled some things. The rings in your life have showed that. If we could cut you and see it, I can tell you, I promise you, you've been cut, but you didn't die. Second thing is, it'll bend, but it won't break. Palm tree. You know, I've, I've watched the storms come over our properties and through over Galveston and places, them palm trees. Man, when them palm trees get hit by that wind, they just bow right on over, man. They just stay on over. And as soon as it, that sun hits them and it comes back out, they straighten back up. Tropical winds blow most trees away, but not the palm tree. The stronger the winds, the further it bends. I said the stronger the winds, the further it bends. Sometimes all the way to the ground. Yet when the storm ceases, it straightens up again. And it's actually stronger in the place where it bent. You might lose your job, lose your family, lose your health. Have all your friends leave. Be in debt, everything against you. You, know, you say to yourself, Pastor, I don't even have a home to stay in. Just bend. Just bow. Just remind God, amen, that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. You are crucified with him and the wind's been hitting you and you're bowing down. One day you're going to straighten back up. Come on. I speak to experience, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, you've got to stay with Christ. You can't let this thing take you out. Storms of life will come, but when it's all over, I'm going to be stronger than I first started. I'm not going through. I'm growing through. It's depth will always exceed its height. So you can cut me, but you can't kill me. I might hit the wind, I'll bow, but I ain't breaking. Number three, like a tree, its depth it's always exceeds its height. The root of the average plant only goes a few feet underground. We've seen this. I go around through the property, yank up plants. I already know which plant I can yank, what I can't yank. Hey Amen. You learn through experience real fast. Amen. But, but the, the root of an average plant only goes a few feet underground. But the palm tree goes down hundreds of feet in search for water. As a matter of fact, its roots will go as far as its height is. So what you not see, and that's what people, they look at you and they, they see you, but they don't realize how deep your roots are. You've been in this thing a long time. You ain't been backing off. You've been digging in, man. Amen. This thing had shook you. Amen. This thing made you bend. Amen. This thing made you bow. You got cut, but you didn't die. Psalm 42, 1, as the deer pants for water, so my soul thirsts for you. Amen. I, I just look like I'm going down. I'm actually going deeper. Hallelujah. You're not shallow. You're not carnal. There's more to us than meets the eye. Psalm 92 verse 12 I say to you again the righteous will flourish like a tree amen like a palm tree they'll grow like a cedar of Lebanon amen cedar trees cedar trees great in size were symbols of grandeur and when the wind blew they put off a fragrant scent no stink coming out of them I said no stink when the wind hit some folk, man, as soon as the wind hit, they little stinkers. They'll get you downwind. You better be careful with them. But then there's others that when the wind hits, thank you, Jesus. How does that sister keep going through that? She bends, but she don't break. She been cut, but you can't kill her. Amen. She going through life. No, no, no. She growing through it. She picked up things as she started moving. When I read the people in the Word of God, I see people that just weren't. Joseph wasn't just going. He was growing. David wasn't just going. He was growing. 
Moses wasn't just going. He was growing. Amen. Everything that God does for us, if it's not God sent, it's God used. And God starts growing inside of us. I'm looking at this thin time. I don't know what the ring of 2020 is going to look like. But I can tell you, the first six months of the year, it ain't looked real good. It's been jagged and thin. But you can tell the droughts. You can tell the struggles. So I got to believe, because I've looked at these tree rings enough to tell you that I've seen the thin rings. And it seemed like right after that thin ring comes a real thick ring. Amen. A real one that's just, just a good ring, Bob, all the way around. Hallelujah. Let's stand together. Would we do that? I'm not going through life, my friend. I'm growing through life. Amen. It's not been a stopping place or getting off. Amen. When I had hesitation, I wish you'd look back on your life. Your preacher does all the time. I look back and I see it. It looked like it was going to take me out. But the next year was glorious. It looked like I wanted to quit here. But the next year was starting up again. It looked like right here, it was, it's like there was no finance. It looked like we weren't going you, to... You have... You don't know. Because I didn't let you know how close we were to not having a church. You don't know the finances. Yet God. Yet God. God did... He does... And it's right on time. Amen. Without me having to beg, plead. I, I've seen God raise, just seem like folk that were almost dead back up again. It's just all right on time. Right on time. Amen. He, he brings comfort to us. And by the way, because those rings are still there, it tells me something. One day, one day them rings will be over with. And we'll be there. We get to heaven, there won't be no more rings. <laughs> Because the Bible says we'll be known as we're known and we're not going to grow old and you're just going to be one big ring. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, I, I, don't, I, can't, I can't explain it other than I can tell you, while you're here, get your ring. While you're here, get your ring. Amen. Because this is where, why we're here to grow. Father, in the name of Jesus, through every drought and storm, Through every moment on this earth where difficulty seems to have reigned, you've marked us as a tree, yet we've grown. Our roots are deeper than what some see. We're not shaken, but we're stirred. We've been cut, but you can't kill us. Lord, I refuse to lay this body down till you tell it to come home. God, I speak to your people. They like trees. I stand among a forest of the little country church. And those watching online, I stand among the forest. I've watched these trees grow. I was a part of some of the rings in their life. I've seen you do great and wonderful things. So this does not scare me. God, I thank you for this moment. Let us grow through it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God big praise in here. Come on, say it with me. I'm growing through it. You know what I get with you? There, there'll be a time I'll get with this, most of you in this building, and I'll ask you a question. Tell me your story. Tell me your story. You know, Sister Spurlock, I pray when you get with the widows and widows, you ask them, tell me your story. H, when you have the prayer meetings, tell me your story. Because there's nothing like hearing people's story. This couple been with me for 35 years or longer. I know this story. Tell me your story. Because, Frank, everybody got one. Amen. Everybody's got one. I watch the young kids come up, and I watch them little rings in them. Like, everything's going to be fine. One day they're going to be an adult. And I pray they grow through life. Amen. Don't just go through it. Be seated just for a brief moment. Your tithe and offering envelope is there in front of you. Those watching online, we literally have been financially making it online. Yet we've been blessed here. But if you're giving by your phone, if you're giving through your iPad, you know that there are, are avenues to do it. 
Don't ask me how. I wrote a check out today. Amen. Seniors, you're gathering today with the riches right after service. And again, those watching online, it's so important you share this message with others. You're not going through life. You're growing through it. And right now, there are things you're going to be growing through. God is going to be adding into your life. You're getting knowledge. You're getting education. But mainly, you're getting wisdom to be able to share with others. Amen. Tuesday night, don't forget about the prayer meeting here at 7 o'clock. Two or more gathered together. There will be a bridal shower for our dear sister, Natalia. How many of you, just, just real fast, think you're going to be at this bridal shower? I, I need a, a kind of a quick count. Just a quick count, because I know there are people on right uh, So it's six, seven, eight. Okay, that's just in here. All right, guys, because I got to let Marie know. A bridal shower. How beautiful. Amen. Uh, July 19th, ladies, you're going to have a meeting here. Uh, our lift, that's next week. The 20th through 22nd, please get your kids signed up for kids camp. If you know other kids, amen, let them know. Uh, We make sure we want to check their temperature when they come. We want to make sure you check their temperature before they go. Let's just do the wise things. Amen. At least we can do that. Take care of them. We'll have them washing their hands. Uh, They say chlorine is a tremendous uh, uh, agent to kill things. So we'll dip them in the pool once a day. There you go. Amen. Dip them in there. Get them really good chlorinated. Hallelujah. So sign them up for kids camp. Send them to camp. We thank you for that. Uh, ropes course, of course, will be on the during the morning times on the 20th, 20, up through the 22nd. We'll be announcing that next Sunday if you want to come help us with the ropes. Jewels for Christ is on the, is that the 28th? 25th. I don't have my glasses on. 25th. I can see that back there. 25th. And Sisters Impacting Sisters. They're working out uh, there at the camp. Amen. Oh, that's Sisters Impacting Oh, that's a different group here. There's the, the workout, and this Sisters Impacting Sisters out at the ranch, July 25th. Amen. So try, we have so many ladies things over here, we had to start something up out at New Caney to help folk, to, ladies, to get together. Trying to work this thing. Everybody good? <laughs> David, if you'd come up and proclaim with the people. When you say, sometimes we say things, we just say it. But I, I can tell you, I've experienced jobs and better jobs. I've experienced bills paid off. It ain't nothing like being debt free. Nothing like, I pray that you get there. Right. Amen. That you keep pressing toward that. Little by little. It's little by little. But it's an amazing feeling to get there. Had we not got debt free, I don't know what would have happened after the last three years with two floods don't know where we'd be right now amen so David yeah and like pastor said you know this is a declaration and all that means is I'm I'm proclaiming it like he said about our kids we proclaim to them we're speaking in faith look you will be good (laughs) you guys see my kids there's lots of declarations made (laughs) daily over my beautiful wonderful amazing children (laughs) in Jesus name but you know seriously you know I like to joke that's who I am but uh, like pastor was talking earlier you you can't offend a dead man you know he was talking about if we are resurrected with Christ if we're dead or crucified with Christ listen we've all been to funerals every single funeral you've been to he or she laid in the casket you could have thrown anything in that casket, anything. It wouldn't have been offended, wouldn't have been upset, and it wouldn't have been tempted in any way. Would have just laid there. That's what God is calling us to as believers. That we have to be like the dead man in the casket. That we can't continue on in our fleshly desires and our thing. He's saying, no, 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 no. You're literally dead to that. It cannot offend you anymore. It cannot tempt you anymore. And so I just pray and I declare that over you guys, that you are dead in Christ. Amen. Today we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, find the money. Oh, my bad. Bills paid off. Settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom.
All right. Lord, I love you. I thank you. And, and like Pastor said, I just pray that every single person in here experience true crucifixion in Christ and then therefore resurrection in Christ that all the old has passed away but the new is brought forth and so Lord I'm just praying that we all be new creations in you that Lord your gifts and your surprises Lord they're coming that we're going to hold fast like the tree we're going to bend and believe that that yes. wind is going to stop and that one day the sun is going to shine again so I pray for everybody in here as the wind has been beating on all of us Lord I just declare sunshine I declare peace and I just say yes, Lord, to what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You guys have a blessed week. Thank you.